Hey guys, back again, October 23rd, and tonight I'm going to talk about The Cabin in the Woods, and I've been looking forward to watching this one for a while. I've only had it till recently, got it for pretty cheap from the pawn shop, only a couple of dollars. And this movie, I think it came out in 2012, and that must have been kind of around the time that I stopped checking out, like the upcoming horror movies, whatever. Um... But I remember this being on the upcoming horror movies website and having a lot of rave about it, and I never got around to checking it. And it's supposed to be like a twist on the uh, old horror movies where kids go out to a cabin. And I didn't know a whole lot about it, but I guess that there's supposed to be somehow like people in control of it, or there's supposed to be something totally different going on. Um, so, anyway. I watched it last night for the first time, and there are going to be spoilers, and I want to say first of all that I did love this movie, and it actually has like a 90% or something on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics. It actually has a lower user score, but it's still pretty high. I think it was like 70 or 80 or something, maybe 70, but the critic score was really high. It is really good. There is some CGI effects with the monsters and stuff that's like, eh not the best that I've seen, but it's not the worst that I've seen. It's pretty good. But basically, yeah, we have a group of kids going out to a cabin to party, basically, like in so many other horror movies. Um, and there's like the typical people where there's like the jock, the smart kid, there's like the beauty queen, the virgin, we find out later, I guess. Um, and there's the stoner dude. So there's like two couples or, and you know, there's three guys and two women, basically. But while we're seeing them um, gather up and get ready for this trip to go to the cabin, we're also seeing these two guys, basically, that are a part of this huge corporation. They're at this headquarters, and they're doing all this preparing, and they're kind of watching these kids and kind of seeing what they're doing. Well, there's a scene where the kids stop at a gas station, kind of like typical we see in other horror movies where they kind of meet like a creepy guy at a gas station. And this guy's like a total egotistical asshole or he's arrogant and he's like chewing, chewing tobacco and he's always spitting. He's just a straight up ass to him. But it's funny though. There's a lot of humor in this and it's really not all that scary, but there might be like some pop-up scares or whatever, but... Anyway, as these kids go past the gas station, they go forward on to where this cabin's going to be. We see like a CGI bird, like a hawk or something, I don't know if it's the eagle or what, like fly in, which I was kind of like, that looks kind of lame, like why, why have like a fake bird? Well, it hits like an invisible force field, and then it like dies. So, so somehow we find out, you know, these kids are being led into a trap. To where these two guys that are at the headquarters, they're like the director and the assistant director or whatever. They're kind of having control of the situation. Now they're being led into an area that's kind of like blocked off, basically. And so the kids get to the cabin and they explore the cabin. They see there's like a one-way mirror there. And um, they're just kind of having fun, whatever. And back at the headquarters, there's a bunch of other people there, and they start making bets on stuff. And I think it's kind of, they kind of don't let you in on what they're betting on and stuff at first, I don't think. I thought they were going to bet on, like, who was going to die or who was going to survive. Well, they were talking about, like, how the game is rigged and stuff, and, like, how can you bet on it? And the director guy's like, it's only, um, he's like, once they get down to the, the cellar, uh, they have, like, free will to make their choices or whatever, so it's not all rigged. And basically, the kids wander down to the cellar. Like, the cellar door just, like, blows open just all of a sudden. <laughs> they're like, how did that happen? Like, why? what caused that? Like, maybe the wind, like, blew it up. And they're like, yeah, that makes no sense. Well, anyways, they crawl down into the cellar. And it's just, like, packed with all these, like, scary items down there. Um, I don't know, like, for instance, there's, like, a big sphere thing that this guy's playing with that it's, like, mechanical, and it kind of makes you think of, like, Hellraiser, where there's, like, the, the block that they play with, and it's, like, you know, if you, if you figure out how to unlock it, like, it would unleash evil or something. 
Um, there's like different dolls or whatever. I, I don't know off the top of my head. There's a lot of this stuff, but one of the girls picks up a book and she starts reading like this diary from like this ancient diary that some woman wrote. <laughs> and uh, anyways, she's reading it. It's creepy and stuff. And she's like, oh, there's like a Latin part. And like the stoner guy's like, don't le read the Latin. Like he's trying to convince him to go back upstairs. He's like, whatever you do, don't read the Latin. Well, she reads it anyway. And then we find out that that has triggered um, this undead redneck torture family to rise from the grave. So, and we go back to the headquarters where they all made the bets and they have like a big whiteboard with like every kind of monster, like ghosts, you know, um, whatever, killer clowns, like just like tons of stuff on this board. And then they have like, redneck torture family zombies like circled like that's what they chose so like when they went to the cellar they had all these choices of what kind of evil they were going to unleash like to kill them basically so they chose the the zombie redneck torture family and uh one of the director guys was like darn it i was hoping for like a merman like i always wanted a merman like a swamp monster or whatever and um the other one's like, have you ever seen, like, the mess that they leave? Like, the cleanup one, that's, like, terrible. <laughs> anyway, so the the zombies come out, and, like, the action starts. They start kind of killing off, you know, at least one of the people, one of the girls, I think, gets, like, decapitated. They have, like, saws, and they have, like, a bear trap on a chain where they just, like, throw the bear trap and it like, snap onto somebody's back, and then they're, like, dragging them. So that's ridiculous. A lot of that stuff is like really dark, like the visuals, like it's nighttime. And so it's kind of hard to see some of the stuff, but there's some bloody stuff there. Um, there's just so much to talk about. Uh, anyway, so like one of the, one of the girls dies and I think somehow, like, one of the guys dies, like, the jock. Something that I really loved about this movie is, like, the nerdy guy, or however you want to describe, I don't know, the, the brainiac of the bunch, or whatever, the calm guy. He is in the game Detroit Become Human on the PS4. And, like, I recognized him. I'm like, that looks exactly like him. And, like, his mannerisms were, like, exactly like this character. And, uh... His voice sounded exactly like the guy in Detroit Become Human. And I don't know the actor's name now. I looked it up, and I confirmed it. And I was like, I knew it. Like, it was just so... And I love Detroit Become Human, so that makes me even more biased towards this movie. I, after I figured that out, I was like, he's in this game. Like, I want to see what else he's done. And, I mean, he's, a, he's in the movie. So, I love that. Besides that, I mean, I didn't really know any of the actors or anything like that. I don't know who directed this or anything. Well, I do know one of the director guys is in a lot of stuff. I think he was the dad in Six Feet Under, the HBO show, but he was also um, in Step Brothers. He was also the dad in Step Brothers, so he's kind of a funny guy. But I'm trying to think about, you know, what, what do I not want to leave out to you? There's stuff that I really want to just get to. So, they think that the stoner guy dies um, because he gets, like, he gets, like, stabbed in the back and drug off. Now, let me tell you, okay, when the girl gets killed, gets beheaded or whatever, we go back to the headquarters with the guys, and he pulls, like, a lever or whatever and, like, cranks it, and then, like, something breaks, and then, like, blood goes down, and, like, underneath of them, there's, like, an underground area underneath this headquarters where blood is pouring down and it's like satisfying these monsters or whatever. You don't see anything. You see um, like cracks being filled. There's like cracks that are like in the design of humans or whatever. And they're like filling with blood. And so it's like a sacrifice is going on. Like you get the vibe that this is being done for sacrifice. We also see tons of TVs with similar things going on all over the world. Like in Japan, there's girls that are being haunted by, like, an Asian ghost, and so they're saying that there's, like, 
people all over the world that are doing this in other countries are like creating scenarios to where people are being murdered by different ghosts or whatever. Um, so the stoner guy gets stabbed and dragged off and they, they pull a lever for him, but spoiler alert, he's not dead. So he, he shows up later on. Um, somehow I think the jock guy dies. Oh, I, I, okay. I know how he dies. All right. I remember. So it's like the jock guy and the brainiac and who was supposed to be the virgin that we find out later. I'm just going to, I'm just describing her as that, but the other, the woman is left. Um, the ditzy blonde, who's like the beauty queen one was the first one to go. Um, so they try to escape and the headquarters place freaks out because there's some kind of glitch in the system, like with the force field or something. There's supposed to be like a path for them to, to escape. Um, they see it or whatever, but, but there's not supposed to be one. So they hurry and they try to fix the situation to get the force field back on. Well, they come to like a gap. And they're like, how are we going to get across there and stuff? Um, so, like, the jock guy gets, like, a mo motorcycle. And he's like, all right. He's like, guys, I'm going to make this jump. And, like, I'm going to go get help. And we're going to come back with, like, an army and helicopters and everything. And we're going to kill those bastards. <laughs> he gives, like, this heroic speech, like, how everything's going to be better. And what happens? He revs up the motorcycle, he goes to make the jump, and he hits that force field, and he dies, and he falls down. So the two people are left like, oh my god. Well, they get in the uh, back in the van or whatever, and uh, the Brainiac guy that I said that I really like, he's driving, and he's kind of like, you know, they're coming up with a plan or whatever. He's like, we're just going to remain calm, and like things are going to be fine. And then like one of those zombies like stab him like instantly like from the back. They're, like, behind him in the van or whatever. Like, a rod, like, goes through his neck or his head or something. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. It's like people just die instantly. and So it's only the woman left. At some point, we do clip, clip back to the headquarters, and we see, like, that Asian scene where there's, like, all these schoolgirls, and there's, like, the, the female ghost. Um... They've somehow, like, captured the ghost, and they, like, turn, they're, like, all holding hands, like, singing a happy song, and, and the ghost, like, turns into a frog or whatever, and they're like, yay, like, like, they defeated the monster, and that, uh, stepbrother's dead guy, he's like, he's like, F you, F you, F you, he's like, the only, if you want, like, good at horror, you have to have, like, American horror. That's funny, though, and then... Basically, we see the girl um, being beaten by this, uh, the, uh, uh, she's being beaten by the torture, one of the torture zombies, and, like, you know, we basically think that, like, she's done for, and, like, everybody's partying, they bring in, like, a bunch of booze and stuff, and, uh, they get a, and they're, and they're like, uh, they're like, how are we celebrating? Like, she's not dead yet. And, and they're like, well, she's like the virgin, like the virgin can live or die. It doesn't really matter. So that's where like the virgin idea comes from. Well, they say that they get a call from upstairs and there's like a red phone that rings and they answer the phone and they're like, oh, and we find out like that the stoner guy is still alive. So... Uh, so yeah, they messed up with him, <laughs> and uh, he basically, you know, hits the the zombie or whatever. He saves that girl. He brings her to a grave. Like she's like, "Why are we going into a gravestone?" He's like, "Come in here and like, like earlier on in the cabin, he he real he noticed a um a camera. Like he found like a wire. He's like, what in the hell is this?' Like he already had his suspicions, like that they were being watched or that they were being controlled, like puppets." Also, that reminds me of another point. After the, the first woman died, 
the jock guy runs into the house and tells the others, and they're like, what are we going to do? And he's like, let's stick together. Like, we'll be undefeatable if we stick together. And then, like, the headquarters place kind of freaks out. They're like, oh, no, that's not good. So, like, they do something that makes, like, a mist come through a vent. And then the jock guy's like, no, like, we should separate and, like, go to separate rooms. <laughs> like, all of a sudden he changes his mind. And the stoner guy's like, what? <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense at all. And he's like, go to your rooms. So, like, they go to their rooms, and then the headquarters place, like, locks the doors, like, to separate them. That's when the stoner guy, like, finds the camera. Anyway, he, they go into this grave, and it's like a... It's like a little room, actually, with, like, concrete or whatever, and there's, like, all these wires and stuff, and he's like, he's like, I found out, like, this is an elevator, and, like, this is how they sent up the, uh, the zombies, like, to kill us, like, whoever these bastards are, like, they, they sent them up, and he's like, I don't know, like, how I can control this or whatever, but I think I can make it go down. And so they, they they do, they end up going down, and as they go down, they make, like, a stop, like, every time, and there's, like, uh, every time they stop, there's, like, a window there, or, like, the door opens up, and there's, like, a different kind of monster, like, in front of them, and they're, like, huh, like, this is where, like, all the different horror monsters and whatnot are kept, So, uh, they see, like, a ballerina girl that has, like, nothing but, like, teeth for her face, like, like a leech or whatever, and, um, there's a guy that looks like he came from Hellraiser, like, a undead, like, demon guy with, like, a buzzsaw through his head, and he's, like, holding that sphere. So they kind of put two and two together, and they're like, they're like, oh, like, we chose, like, how we were gonna be killed, like, this is all, like, a game to somebody or whatever. Well, they end up going, like, to the bottom, and the people are watching them the whole time. Like, they can see that they've gotten into there. They get to the bottom, like, these hallways, and um, they have, like, a message over the intercom. They're like, we're sorry, like, this has to happen. Like, you guys have to die or whatever, so why don't you, like, surrender yourselves? Um, and you see, like, SWAT teams, like, coming in to, that are going to kill them. Like, these guys in, like, all black with machine guns and stuff. Well, they come around the corner or whatever, and they start sh lighting them up. Like, they run and they jump into this room. And there's, like, a there's like a control room. And there's, like, a window above it. So, like, they're shooting out the window, and they're, like, ducking down. And the girl, like, sees the control room, the control panel. And she's like, you know, what if I do this or whatever? And she hits something, and then, like, we realize, like, all the doors, like, are on the cages are basically going to open up, and, like, all those monsters are going to come out. And, like, the SWAT people are like, oh, crap. <laughs> and that's, like, one of the most awesome scenes in a movie that I've seen in a while. And you should just look that up on YouTube. I'm sure you can just find that scene. Like, when those doors open up, like, everything under the sun, like, comes out at once, and it's just, like, a total massacre. There's, like, a giant snake just eating people. There's, like, a giant, like, bat monster creature. There's, like, more zombies. There's killer clowns. There's, like, a machine that just has, like, buzz saws and, like, with, like, mechanic arms on it and stuff. And it's, like, zzz, zzz, just, like, cutting into people. And there's just blood going everywhere. There's, like, a wolf man eating people. Like, they just throw out, like, everything out there. This whole hallway is just, like, filled with carnage. <laughs> It's just like, oh my god, there's like a ghost flying around. But yeah, anyways, they they go through more hallways and there's just monsters just everywhere. Just They just keep coming out and stuff. Monsters just, I mean, killers, serial killers, monsters, everything you can imagine. And they start working their way into the headquarters where like the, all the people were partying and stuff. Like the people in control, they start getting massacred. Well, that one guy that said that he always wished that they would pick a merman, like a swamp monster, like, the swamp monster comes for him, <laughs> like, out of nowhere, he's like, the swamp monster's crawling, he's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, <laughs> he gets, like, devoured by that. Anyway, they end up getting down to the bottom, like, where the sacrifices were being made, and then Sigourney Weaver pops up, she's in this movie at the end. 
And she tells him a story about how, like, these are, like, five gods that have been kept under that that will destroy the world, but we've, they've been kept calm by the sacrifices or whatever. And she says, basically, that the guy, the stoner guy, has to die. Like, the virgin doesn't have to die, but she's like, either you can, like, die willingly or, like, the gods will be released and angry and kill the whole world and you'll still die and he's like oh those are he's like i don't know those are both tempting choices <laughs> well she gives like the virgin girl and she says like you're the virgin and she's like i am and she's like we work with what we have or whatever and then uh she gives her like a gun and she's like go ahead and kill him and she's like thinking about killing him to save the world but there's like a wolf man coming behind her <laughs> And he doesn't say anything, and the wolfman bites her. He ends up getting the gun, I think, and killing Sigourney Weaver or something, or killing the wolfman. I think he saves the girl, and then they basically, I think they like light up a joint, and, they're, and she's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I was about to kill you. And he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you about the wolfman. And they basically sit there, and then I guess like the gods are going to break loose and destroy the world. They're like, yep, yep, this is it. And, and then... Yeah, how it ends is, like, a giant arm and hand, like, comes up out of the whole, like, building and just, like, tears it all apart, and, like, that's the end. Like, the world's gonna end at the end of the movie. So stuff's all over the place, but, but yeah, it's totally a different twist on the old cabin horror movie. Um, so, it definitely deserves a watch, and, uh. It's just like chaos, like when all that stuff comes out at once. <laughs> it just like blows away your senses. <laughs> You're just like, whoa. That is nuts. So that's the cabin in the woods. Something twisted fun. So you got a stupid stick there. It says, A rambunctious group of five college friends steal away for a weekend of debauchery in an isolated country cabin, only to be attacked by horrific supernatural creatures in a night of endless terror and bloodshed. Sound familiar? Just wait. As the teens begin to exhibit standard horror movie behavior, a group of technicians in a control room are scrutinizing and sometimes even controlling every move the terrified kids make, with their efforts continually thwarted by an all-powerful eye in the sky, do they have any chance of escape? There's a lot of humor in this, and the stoner guy is, like, totally over-the-top <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and it's funny. Uh, it's interesting, this says that Michael, is that Michael Travers? Because I've seen him on so many other reviews. Or Peter Travers, that's who it was. It says Wicked Twisted Fun by Peter Travers, but from Rolling Stone, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, I've seen his quotes on some of the other horror movies that I've went over. That also says from the creators of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so, which is a good movie, too. Anyway, I know it's all over the place, but that's my review of it, I guess. But I loved it. I'd definitely watch it again. It was fun, you know. It's not, you know, I just talked about The Silence of the Lambs. Is it like a classic like that and everything? No, but it's just another stupid, fun horror movie. So, that's going to be it. Alright, guys, check it out. God bless. See you later.